what is going on guys it's Jamie and welcome back to another video and welcome back to the house buying series today we are giving you guys what is a very highly requested video we're going to be taking you through our entire snagging process and letting you know what some of the issues are that we have had since moving into a new build. If you're looking forward to the video guys, make sure you hit that thumbs up button for me. And if you're new to the channel or if you just haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button as well for new videos every single week. So just to quickly explain if you don't know what snagging is, when you move into a new build house, obviously everything is brand new. So you're going to have some teething issues. There's going to be some problems here and there and the snagging process is you recording all of those issues and telling the developer so they can then rectify them and put them right. So just a pre-warning before we get into it <laughs> there are quite a lot of snags that you can get with a new build I think it's something that you need to be prepared for mm. and expect so just don't be put off by the number of snags that we're gonna go through. What we are gonna try and do is list literally as many of the problems that we had as possible as Lucy said, not to try and put you off, but literally just to show you how broad of a spectrum it is of snags and issues that you might encounter. We also just wanted to add that if you are in the process of buying a new build house and you are really worried about the snagging process, there is such a thing as a professional snagger, which is someone who literally just comes around and finds all of the snags in your house. Personally, we didn't end up hiring one because I work in the building trade as a carpenter, so I kind of knew what issues to look out for. But as I said, if it is something that you are really worried about, just go for it and hire a professional snagger. They can be quite expensive, but they do spend, I know our neighbors had day, one, they spent yeah. like a day looking at absolutely everything. They do things like thermal imaging and stuff like that. We had a couple of people in the development that had had a professional snagger and we managed to look at their professional snagger reports. So if you can have a look at one, it gives a bit of an idea of what to look out for um, when you're doing your own snags. And before we start, just for some information for you guys, our developer was Bovis Homes, which is now known as Vistry Homes. So I'm sure that different developers have different ways of setting up their snagging process. For us, when we moved into the house, we were told that we were gonna have a courtesy meeting after two weeks of living there. And that was gonna be the point when we told the developer all of the snags that we have found, and then they would then rectify them. And that brings us to our first point, guys. Make sure you make a snag list as soon as you move into the house. The process of moving into your house obviously contains a lot of movement, there's a lot of stuff being lifted about, and it can get to the point where if you leave it too late, you won't know how to differentiate between your marks and scuffs on the walls compared to the ones that are already there. So literally, as soon as you get in the door and you get some time to yourself, go around the entire house and look out for any issues at all and jot them all down. Yeah, I'd say one really important thing is to make sure you take photos of everything. Well, obviously with photos, you've got timestamps to them, so if it does get to a point where the developer's saying that damage is your fault. Evidence. You can you can go back and you've got evidence to prove that um, you're not responsible for it. So on that first day, the main things really that we discovered was just really common things with painting and decorating, little cosmetic problems here and there. Most of these painting and decorating snags were small issues, but one of the bigger ones we had was in the living room where we actually had some watermarks come through the wall behind the television. Basically what these were is blobs of adhesive that they used to stick the plasterboard to the block work. Long story short, our neighbor had some issues with their heating, so all of the moisture was only drying out our side and it was causing these moisture marks to come through the wall. Luckily, we didn't have any mold or any other issues from this but they did have to come back around and stain block the wall and then repaint the whole thing as well. One thing to note guys is that little hairline cracks and things like that in paintwork is going to be very common when you move into a new build. It's a brand new house so it's going to take some time for it to settle and that is when those hairline cracks are going to appear. These can't be put down as snags. The only time that cracks can be is if they are bigger than the thickness of a one pound coin. So they have to be fairly substantial for your developer to actually do anything about them. Anything smaller than this is not worth jotting them down because if they fill them up, they're just gonna reappear because the house is still settling. Whilst it's important to look around inside the house, don't forget 
to actually look around outside as well. We have a little porch on the front. Uh, we had a few issues with this uh, decoration wise. There were some chips and cracks and stuff in it. Our front door piece of glass had a crack in it. I was gonna say, we also had our bay window roof just had loads of shit on top oh, of it. Yeah, <laughs> we only yeah. realized that a few weeks ago. Check out for things like doors being able to close and open and lock. Our living room door was literally so tight down on the carpet that we couldn't move it at all. There was also things like our induction hob was not secured in place so it slides around all over the place. The seal to our on the seal to our ensuite shower was all just bent and stuff and didn't seal correctly. We had a bit of an issue with our washing machine door. It was rubbing on the side and it ended up that it was actually an issue with the whole corner of the kitchen. So the kitchen fitter needed to come back to sort that out, which still hasn't happened. Um, so that's still an issue as well, alongside some other little problems in the kitchen. We had a couple of doors that had chips and dents in them that we told them needed replacing. We also had a few radiators where the pipes were hanging underneath. We had missing door stops. There was also like a little spot of glue on the splashback in the kitchen, which you could just see. Again, guys, some of these things are really small problems that you might not think even class as a snag, but at the end of the day, they do. You're paying a lot of money for a brand new house and everything should be nice when you move in. And obviously sometimes it isn't, things get missed. And this is why the snagging process is important. And it's also important that you list down everything that bothers you so that they can then rectify these problems. When we moved in, we were very fortunate in the fact that we didn't have any major problems, i.e. we didn't have any big leaks, we didn't have any big electrical issues. But there were a couple of things when we moved in that were bigger than painting and decorative snags and were just really annoying and frustrating. The first one of these we discovered on a first night in the house. We thought it would be a good idea to get all of our plates out, all of our cutlery out and put it in the dishwasher give it a test cycle and also clean everything in the process until we realized that the dishwasher wasn't working. Luckily, we reported this to Bova straight away and they sent a customer care person out the next day to discover that the dishwasher just wasn't connected. The other thing was we didn't have any internet connection when we moved in. Obviously, we weren't expecting to be hooked up with a BT hub straight away, but one thing that you should be guaranteed when you move in is the connection point. Everything should be wired up and ready to go, leaving you to just get the router to set your own internet up. It was actually the main fiber cable into the house that was damaged. Basically, it runs from underneath the stairs, over the hallway, into the downstairs toilet and out the front of the house. The main issue and the frustrating part about it was how long it took to be fixed. Mm -hmm. Fortunately for us, um, we were able to get a temporary solution, which I don't think would happen for everybody that has an issue with internet. No. The sales office was closing down, so we were able to take basically the whole hub and setup that they had in the sales office. We were able to plug that in at home and get some Wi-Fi set up. Several weeks later, and they finally managed to organize BT and the electrician to come into our house. They decided what they needed to do was to replace that entire fiber cable right from the cupboard under the stairs, over the hallway, and into the downstairs toilet, which was just absolutely heartbreaking. We knew that they were just gonna have to make holes in the ceiling and stuff like that to be able to feed this cable through. Fortunately, they did have a little bit of luck and instead of replacing the whole thing, they managed to just feed the cable through. But even so, we still ended up with these massive messy holes either under the stairs, in the hallway, in the downstairs toilet. It looked like a building site again. Yeah, it was absolutely horrible. But then from there, they did get some making good people to come back in and some decorators and now you wouldn't even know that these holes were there, but it was just frustrating. So as I said, after two weeks of living in the house, we had that courtesy meeting where we told Bovis all of the issues that we had discovered, and then it was in their hands to sort out tradesmen to come to our house and rectify all of the issues. We basically made a big document on Microsoft Word with pictures and lists of everything, and we sent that over to them. And then during this process, obviously we were still living here, things were still moving about, so we continued to add stuff to this list when we discovered it. I don't know if that's the case for every developer, whether, whether they'll allow you to keep adding snags to the list. We're at the end of the development, so yeah, they were quite been quite lenient on allowing us to add extra stuff to the snag list. I think if your site doesn't allow for additions to be made, it will just be the case that um, when you do have future snags in your 
I think it's normally a two year period, mm. it will just go straight to the customer care team, so it just might take a little bit longer to get resolved. So over this period there was a few new issues that arise, you know, the carpet on the stairs we noticed just wasn't laid very well, you could get like your hands behind it and stuff. We got the carpet fitter to come back and do that. We had squeaky stairs. Yeah, we had some squeaks on the stairs which obviously tied into that and they managed to fix these at the same time. Squeaky stairs is just a nightmare because even now they still squeak. If the stairs aren't installed properly in the first place, they're basically going to squeak forever, which is really annoying, but something that I guess you just have to live with if they weren't put in properly. Obviously, over this time, we noticed a few more painting snags around the house. As I said, we were very lucky in that we didn't have any major water issues when we moved in. But one thing we did have was just a small recurring problem that ended up becoming just this big thing in the kitchen under the sink unit. Down. Every so often when we pull things out of that cupboard we would realise that it had like water underneath boxes and bottles and stuff and we come to notice that there was a slight puddle that began to form under one area. Um, not massive, it wasn't like running water or anything like that but it was just something that was annoying and wasn't quite right we told bovis obviously they got a plumber to come in and try and fix it and it just turned into this big hoo-ha of back and forward between us the but us bovis the plumber trying to sort out this issue he actually ended up coming back at least four times trying to sort out this one issue every, tiny little problem yeah every time he came around he would end up trying to fix something different that we said wasn't the problem but he insisted that it was and then in the end it was the problem that we thought it was in the first place. It was a big mess but it all ended up getting sorted out which was good but just be prepared for a lot of back and forward, a lot of tradesmen to keep coming in and out of your house trying to find these problems. So since then we are now three months into living in our house and in our case, we are still getting snags. It's probably worth mentioning that in normal scenarios, you'd probably send off your snag list after that two week period. And once all of those snags are rectified, you'd probably get passed on to customer care. Um, in our situation, we're still getting our snag list completed. We're almost there. Um, but I think it's just because A, we're at the end of the site development and B, COVID and everything's it's made it a bit more, yeah, everything's made it a bit more difficult to get things done quickly. As a whole, I would say around 90% of our painting snags have been rectified. It got to the point where they came and sorted them out and when they left, we were just like, you know what, anything else that's left, we'll just do it ourselves because we're frankly just bored of all these painters keep coming back and forward. Our induction hob that wasn't secured the day we moved in still hasn't been fixed. We've had hell back and forth with the supplier, but that still hasn't been rectified either. But really, I mean, that is everything. As I said, I'd probably say around 80% of everything overall has been finished at this point. And again, it's hard to be frustrated because as Lucy said, we are in the middle of a global pandemic, so everything seems to just be in slow motion with getting these problems sorted, which obviously has made it a bit more difficult in this scenario. And that is it guys, I think that is everything that we wanted to cover in this video. As I said at the start, we really just wanted to let you guys know as many of the problems that we have had as possible to really give you a sense of what kind of thing to expect. Again, as we said, not to put you off in any way, shape or form, but really just to show you what it is like if you are moving into a new build and what to expect in terms of problems that you may have and snagging that you will need to do. We really, really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If there is anything that you think we have missed or anything that you'd like to know a bit more information about, just leave it down in the comment section below. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button for me, guys. I would really, really appreciate it. And if you're new to the channel, guys, or if you just haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button for new videos every single week, and we'll see you in the next one.